you're ready i believe we are ready here and uh, now we're going to bring in our guests our guest is back by popular demand she's one of the few people who the audience ever since last year when she showed up said you got to get back get her back on they love the way she carries herself and the way she expresses herself and so therefore welcome back to narc abuse tv network Grace. We got it. We we got it together some kind of way here. I don't know know. exactly how we did it. (laughs) Let me move back so my face is right there. Hey, hey, I was gonna I was gonna say we both should do it together where we're just like totally like totally (laughs) up in this up in the screen. Uh well, you know, when I'm dealing with royalty, I have to make sure I do it right. So I had to I had to make sure I had the right vibe happening here so that you know, you don't want to mess up. You don't want to mess up in front of the queen. At least that's what they say. You know, in the UK. Oh, you were speaking my language. <laughs> <laughs> all the I way, speak- and you are, you sir, are a king. <laughs> oh man. Okay. You first are. of all, that has never. I've never been told that before. I am slicing this part of the show out, <laughs> video editing that part out, and putting <laughs> it right next to my bed when I don't feel good. I'm pushing that button. There's Grace telling me. I'm the king today. <laughs> and you know, right. I don't lie. I'm like, <laughs> no, it's not your thing. Don't say yes. yes, that's why. <laughs> okay. All right. Now I that you that mentioned we, that. We both have beanies. Didn't talk about it. So I don't want you people sitting there thinking we discussed this. We did not. <laughs> no. It just so happens. It happens. It, that kind of happens here uh, between you and I. And, uh, I, I respect and admire you, and I'm not going to start off the show off and make you think I'm trying to make you cry or anything like that. I I really like you, and I've always liked you. I really, really, really like you. I've always uh, done so before we ever met because I admire your energy. And uh, for me, as uh, I have come to learn, is that it, it, it works so well to uh, see behind. I'm going to throw an old expression. That I got from uh, my older sister. Uh, I have, uh, they're all older than me. I'm the last of seven. But uh, what I was going to say is, see behind the mascara is what my sister used to tell me. She and says, "You like a, you like a girl. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it." And you are a good-hearted, rightly disposed person who you're. You're very. You are a very kind person. Oh, thank you. Uh, Who are you? Every interchange we've had, you. Your kindness comes out the way your tone is, the way you speak. Uh, but I'm asking you to step outside of your kindness now. Because <laughs> <laughs> I want to do a show with you that uh, is kind of a piggyback to what I didn't really get into with you when we did the show last year. Is uh, I want you to give advice to some 
young women who may not, I'm not leaving guys out, but I am, um, who find themselves in abusive situations, who are trying to figure out whether they're in an abusive situation. But more importantly, if they've left the abusive situation to find their footing to start moving forward at a rhythm that works for them and not go back to a rhythm that worked for the abuser. So that's pretty much what I want to do, but not my way, but your way. Now, I know you have your plethora of things that you involve yourself in and do. Can you give everyone an idea of who Grace is? It's not going to mean anything to people that actually know, have watched you already and who wanted you back. Uh, I'm, I think I counted up to either 24, between 24 and 27 people mentioned that they wanted you back on the show. Now, I don't solicit those things. They just, people know that they can write me or tell me who they want back. And this was last year. Wow. And uh, it's taken a year to get, get this get you back but are close to it but thank you for saying yes tell people who grace is who the amazing grace is oh my god <laughs> well first of all thank you guys for requesting me i always enjoy uh sharing my experience and helping others um you know uh, that makes me feel like all the pain i've been through and um you know it's not in vain uh, yeah. so thank you so much for requesting me guys um i if you have any questions or need anything, you can private message me and uh, you can private message Narc Abuse TV. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, yeah. you can just, you know, we'll answer any questions that you have. Uh, so I'm kind of like one of these people that have always do a lot of things. So I am a relationship coach, first of all, a certified one. I, I'm also a writer. I consider myself more than anything a writer, comedy writer. Uh, I feel yeah. humor really helps deal with situations. And if I tell a story, I like to use humor uh, because it kind of lightens the load. You know, it's, it's, it's good to have the serious part of um, narcissistic abuse and, you know, and, and then add a little bit of humor because that helps yeah. us deal with it much, at least myself, you know, it helps me deal with it. And I know a lot of people, um, it helps a lot of people too. Uh, so I, that's what I would say. And I'm a comedian. I uh, do stand up. I, you know, I write comedy. I've done sketch comedy, improv, all kinds of things. Um, so I educated myself in the field of comedy and relationships. So that's kind of like my brand. Uh, it's healing on solutions with love and laughter. That's, that's what I'm about. Yeah, it gives, it gives, the, for those of you who have never met Grace, or have gone to her page, it gives you an idea of of who she is when it comes to quote unquote marketing and her adventures, but who you are when it comes to someone letting you down and someone not being there for you, though they promise to do that or care for your heart uh, the way they should, you've experienced that as well. Oh, absolutely. Of course. I grew up with my mom being, um, her mental illness, um, had her act like a narcissist. I think that's my take on it. Uh, she mm -hmm. was unmedicated. I think she was borderline personality. And uh, that was really rough. Um, so I grew up with uh, that never knowing how she would react, what would make her mad. Uh, so I grew up observing everything and, and being completely on high alert, which yeah. happens to all of us that have been with a narcissist. Uh, so yeah. it started... And, since I have memory, I mean, my wow. mom, and she would be physically abusive too. So it was, it was not fun, but I thought that was normal. Right. And so yeah. I always, I either gravitated towards men that were like my dad who was super chill, but he never defended me because he was afraid of my oh. mom. Too. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. And then, or be attracted to people like my mom who, you know, to me, it was familiar to be, uh, yeah emotionally on that roller coaster of not knowing yeah. which i know it's uncomfortable but it was what i knew um yeah. so so yeah that's my experience with narcissistic abuse and of course i you know that led me to be a relationship coach because i really wanted to find out about what had happened to me and mm -hmm. also help others with this issue um 
So now, anything- <laughs> I, I just have to I just have to say it's not that you liked being on an emotional roller coaster oh, no. per se. Right. But it was what you no. were I like how you said it. I like how you said it. You this is something you were familiar with. This is something yes. you were comfortable with. Absolutely. So it wasn't like you were seeking to be on a roller coaster. It just so happened that's kind of the lifestyle you were accustomed to. It's like Absolutely. like being it's like a being born into a, a drug czar uh, a family. It's like, you know, yes. you know I work at McDonald's, work at McDonald's, or take over this part of the territory <laughs> and, and drugs. Yeah, totally, so. totally. It's like it's normal to you, you know? Yeah. Even though it's very, very uncomfortable because I'm kind of like a chill person. I mean, I'm high energy, but I'm very mentally stable. Yeah. Take after my dad, <laughs> who was mentally yeah. stable. Mel- you're mom- mellow. You're, you're mellow and easy going, easy yeah. to get along with. Easy to get along with. I, yeah. I, right. And it, yeah. Totally. And I won't react if you do something, you know, that makes me angry. I will. I actually, whenever somebody makes me angry, which is very unusual, if they yeah. do, um, I had a roommate who's my best friend and he, uh, not now, but I used to, and we've known each other for a very long time. And yeah. one night he, he was drunk. He came here drunk and he started being an asshole. And I was like, oh, I can't say asshole. <laughs> Sorry. And hey, he look, called. look. Look, I haven't. I, I don't have a button for that. I could. I could. You know, but I'm not quick enough. It, this would be. This would be the button. My temporary button. Okay. So, go ahead. You were saying no. No. Go ahead. Go. Ahead. That's okay. Hey, I. I've been to. I give it in the comedy clubs. I understand. I understand. Go ahead. That's how we speak. You know. That's our love language. I I have friends that are comedians. But go ahead. It's okay. Go ahead. So you know. You know. Um, so, so I have, I have virgin, I have virgin, I have virgin ears, but it's okay. Go ahead. I know you do. I don't. <laughs> Mine, okay. Mine are, you were yeah, saying. Beyond. Uh, so, so my roommate, my ex roommate came, came in and, and we're super great friends. So it's no big deal But he was drunk and he started behaving like a total a-hole. And I was like, instead of reacting, which is what my mom would have done, uh, mm-hmm. because of her mental thing, I actually went you're pissing me off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step out of the kitchen and I'm going to lock myself up in my room because I am getting really upset and really mad at you. So that's wow. how I, you know, wow. that's my reaction. So that's the real me. You know, so, but- so I got to ask, so how did you, because people will hear this and they will have a totally different reaction. So how is it for you? Do you like, is this like a Spock out of body kind of thing happening that you can see like a matrix thing or have you practiced it enough or, <laughs> or is it just natural for you to go like, okay, obviously you don't recognize that I'm getting upset <laughs> and, <laughs> and for your safety and for your yes, well being, yes. I'm going to go over here. And so that you don't do anything to further harm yourself. I'm going to lock the door. And yes. you may not appreciate this in this moment that I won't escalate with you, but you do you, baby, because I can't do that with you. I'm going to be over here for your safety, okay, because I will hurt you. <laughs> so oh, you, my God. <laughs> oh, well. I, I can see you. That, that's like a, that's a really short skit that somebody, you need to write to put that in one of your shows or movies. And stuff. It, so, yeah, it has, yeah, it has to go in a script. Absolutely. <laughs> it's like, yes. let me help you by me removing myself from you. Because <laughs> if not, I'll be all over you. Absolutely, yes. But this actually wasn't a case of narcissistic abuse. This was no, somebody no, right. who was intoxicated. Situation. You yeah. know, then he he was knocking on my door. Do you want some pizza? I'm like, yeah, I'll wear it from the door. <laughs> <laughs> He's making a peace offering with pizza. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, not in the mood for pizza right now. No, not no. in the mood. Yeah. But, you know, we, the next day I was like, I don't want you to get drunk and come here anymore because you're an idiot. Uh, you behave like an idiot. You are not yourself. And I don't like you when you're drunk. Yeah. I really don't like you. So everything was good. We got get along yeah. great. But yeah. if it, it's a narcissist, you know, they actually want you to engage in their anger. Yeah. Right? They want you to get upset because it's almost like a vampire. They feed off of your negative emotions. So they will create scenarios that will put you in a situation where you have to react, preferably not calm. Of course not. They hate that. If you don't engage, you're not giving them what they want. So then that's when, so you, you have lived with someone, a caretaker, who's supposed to be 
teaching you how to be calm and enjoy a peaceful life. But that wasn't going to happen because they needed the agitation and the and the fighting. They needed that to feel alive. Exactly. Yes. How did, Isn't it how sad? Did, I was going to say, how did you navigate that as a, I'm just asking, as a teenager? I, 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 haven't, exper I haven't experienced that, which you're describing. So I'm, please don't take this wrong way. I mean, we've talked, but I, just describe it for everyone, because somebody's living this right now that's going to listen and watch this back. Yes. And, well, well, wait, I take that back. Here, um, Miss Jamaica, Miss Jamaican Doll, uh, uh, a regular of the show, thank you for being here again from Jamaica. She says, I can relate from what you were talking about. So that's oh, what I'm wow. saying. Somebody can relate to what you're saying. How is it that you survive your teenage years? Well, first of all, um, you know, I'm sorry that you went through that, um, Miss Jamaica. Uh, how did I survive? I don't know. You know, I, I think the main thing for me was because I'm a very analytical person, mm -hmm. I would not react with my mom. Uh, I would just like, you know, like a scared puppy, like just not do yeah. anything. Yeah, right, right. Think, you know, like, okay, what did I do to piss her off? And it was, it was always something like minor. And I, I didn't understand why she gave me mixed feelings. Like, I love you. And then she would just be awful to me. And then again, I'm sorry I did that. It was just a wow. mental torture. I'm surprised that I'm not in a <laughs> psychiatric in a home. hospital in a home. right now. In a home. In a home. Yeah. In a, you, wait, okay, I want to talk about that little bit of cycle. So just in case somebody hears this and they're going through it and they can't put a, 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 a meaning behind it. Mm -hmm. I, I love you. I'm mad at you. And I'm sorry. Well, I hate you. I love you. I'm sorry I did that. This is kind of like, you know, I'm upset with you. Mm -hmm. I love you. I'm sorry I did that to you. Or anywhere in there. They, it just keeps going. Absolutely. If a person, if a person, and, I, and again, guys, I know some of you are here or may watch this back later, but I'm going to address uh, ladies now. That's why I wanted Grace to be here today. And uh, you'll be back again. Uh, um, we'll be together again back in December as I start to end uh, this year off uh, with you, uh, December 14th. But what I was going to say is some young lady is dealing with this or a woman at work with a boss got the same crazy cycle <laughs> of, of abuse, technically, yes. instability. Yes. How did you navigate from having someone yell at you, react to you in a I hate you kind of a way, then almost an you know, overreaction of love and pouring love bombing you and then yes. turning right around and then hoovering and making excuses as to why they did it and then start all over again? How did you deal with that? Uh, let's just say between the ages of uh, as far as you can remember back 15 to 20, I don't know, 12, 15, 20. Okay. years of age. How, how did you kind of navigate that? Well, this it's funny that you said 12 years old, because I do recall when I was 12, um, I had suffered so much abuse and so much injustice, because it was like, I would do the stupidest thing, and she would blow up like I just killed someone. I was like, wow. what? You know, and I what? felt terrible, right? You feel yeah. your self-esteem goes down, you you just feel awful, you feel guilty, you feel like you're mm -hmm. making her suffer, um, you know. Um, so when I was 12, and I don't recommend people do this, but I was so tired of her physically abusing me that I, I was very athletic and I was almost her height. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I actually punched her in her arm and she stopped. Wow. She really? never hit me again. Yep. She was afraid of me. Wow. Afraid. Now she's not. It's easy to abuse a child because you're not strong. This is a big adult yeah. that's hitting you. So when I felt that I was strong enough and mm -hmm. not, I, I was like, I'm not taking the shit anymore. You're hitting me. I hit you back. Mm -hmm. She stopped completely. Now, now, if anybody is here in the chat and that has happened to you, I have heard this before. Not, not from you, but I've heard it from others. Really? Uh, I, I heard it from a couple of guys uh, that I interviewed, and they told me this is what they did to their dad, and it all stopped. Uh, yes. But uh, I have I have to admit, I can't think right now offhand, but I, I'm quite sure I have never heard it ha from a female. I've heard guys tell me in a show prep oh, or really? getting ready for a show. Oh, yeah. 
that wow. they they punched their dad back who, uh, who abused them all when they were little always you know pushed them around throw them around you know slap them upside the head all this kind of stuff and they got you know they got bigger <laughs> and then one day they just like lost it and they punched them back and it was like the whole world the whole world just stopped and just went in reverse. <laughs> just, yes. And every every time he walked into the house, the dad was like going out to the garage. You know, just, I'm thinking of somebody right now who told me that. And I went like, seriously, that happened? I, I just, yeah. I find it fascinating that they are that calculating, though. Absolutely. Because that's not like an accident for them to stop. They know they knew by stopping what they were doing. Absolutely. Was, and, and I think that what I, what I call it, I call it illegal, not just because against the law. It's illegal to do that towards your family member. It's like yeah. a, a written, unwritten code. You just don't treat a family member by abusing them physically. Oh my so God, they no. knew she knew she was doing something that was not of right. Of course she knew. Absolutely. And as an adult, I asked her, um, you know, we used to take trips together. I always loved her. I was loyal to my mom because that's the kind of person I am, even if mm -hmm. she inflicted suffering. And I felt bad for her. Uh, it's it's really very a very strange uh, connection. Um, yeah. But um, I forgot what I was going to. <laughs> you're, you're a very strange connection, but <laughs> but, but when it when it came to her abusing you, uh, yes. I'm, I'm just yes. going to ask this now. If you remember your point, go ahead. But I when do. it came I to do. her abuse, okay, go ahead. You were going to say. Okay. I do. Um, the reason I did it was because. She did it to me all the time. So I assumed you, that it was okay for me to do it. One time, I never, and I don't hit people. I've done it twice to my abusers. One, uh, my mom, and then when I was with, uh, I'm not gonna say names, let's call him Mike. Yeah. Uh, so when I was with Mike, uh, he was actually an ex wrestler, um, ex bodybuilder. He was very, mm -hmm. very, very strong. He never physically abused me, but I actually pushed him like this, and yeah. it was like pushing a wall. <laughs> and then after I did that, when I realized my hands wanted to hurt him, like they were wow. independent. People, wow. I never felt like that in my life, and I pushed him, and he didn't move, obviously, because he's huge. Huge. And that's when I'm like, I have to leave. And a week later, I was out of the house. I'm like, I have yeah. to leave because I'm turning into somebody I am not. Yeah, yeah. But that's it, what it, they do, you know. I was going to say, that's what, that's the abuse can move a person to become reactive that way. It can cause a person uh, to think that this is the response I need to give is to, as it were, fight fire with fire. But it could truly be something that ends up burning us or the victim, or the 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 person that's the target, yes. they could end up being the one burned, and behind a jail cell, and a life uh, of res being restricted, yes. where that other person is roaming free, causing more havoc. Absolutely. And then when you tell people, when I told people about his behavior, they thought I was crazy, that I was a bitch. He actually told somebody that I was being a bitch to him. I'm like, me, I'm being a bitch to you. It's like, wow, so, how we changed so, the story here. So did you, when that happened, did you, did you find yourself talking to somebody and then they started treating you funny or was it just, they came out and said, Hey, look, why are you treating so-and-so so bad? And you're going like, what's going on? What are you talking about? I'm the one that's being, yeah. did you find yourself trying to defend yourself against things that were said about you? Uh, of course. Uh, but then I stopped saying anything that you know, with the name of the person who, who did it. Uh, I hide the identity. I don't say who the person of is. Of course not. Right. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not doing that. Um, but yeah, no, they, they thought, except my friends, obviously. Uh, my friends were absolutely awesome. But like other people, I just stopped saying anything. Uh, yeah, it didn't work out, whatever. Um, and he faked it, like when we were in public. Oh, she's the love of my life. I love her so much. And like, wow. people were like, oh, I want what she has. I was like, girl, you don't. <laughs> you don't want it. <laughs> no, you, don't. you go like, you go like, no, it's really, it's all packaging. It's all packaging. Yeah, it's not what you. <laughs> it's not what you think. It is okay. not what you think. Because yes. you know, you know, it's it's like I just said this the other day to somebody. It's like. Uh, going to the produce aisle and then going to the bakery section. 
you know, you go to the produce aisle, you can you, you touch it, feel it. You can even taste it, but you just got to buy it. So but you got a pretty good idea, right, of what it is. You go to the bakery aisle, and it's all packaged right. You can't take it home, and I'm speaking from experience, and you open it up, and you think it all looks good, but there was the – I did that, and the cake, I, I brought it home, and there was mold underneath on the bottom of the cake. Yeah. But when you look – but when you look at the cake, yeah. it's like awesome. Yeah. What they did is they put the old cake on top and the fresh stuff that they had just made and packaged underneath it. Instead of That's throwing good. it away because it was they never paid attention to the date that it, it had an expiration date. Some people's relationships are like that. It has an expiration date that they uh -huh. never knew about, and they're, yeah. they're, they're still eating rotten cake, and they don't recognize why they keep feeling sick. It's because they've been eating something that's been prepackaged to look good, and yes. the icing looks perfect, the toppings look great, the sprinkles look rocking. But man, you stick your, you stick a fork and put that in your mouth, you're gonna get sick. And Absolutely. so many people end up finding that out when they're with someone that yes. the sprinkles were, it was all fake. And actually, it's funny that you say the the sick part because when I was with Mike. Um, in nine <laughs> it's so hard for me to call him. Let's, let's go. Let's go. With, let's go with John Doe. Let's just say I John like Doe. To call him Dick, but we're not going to do that. Sure. Well, <laughs> I, I I hate to say this. I have a family member that was his nickname, but but it was but it was okay. It's it's because they they wanted to always call him Richard. So let's just call him Richard. Let's just say Richard. So okay, it's Richard. similar. We'll it's similar to Richard. what you have in mind. So so Richard. So what happened with Ricardo? Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, you speak my language now. Ricardo. Uh, so, Ricardo, though. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, he, uh, he actually, the, the abuse, which I was actually aware of, part of me was aware of it, and coming to terms that my mom had abused me, and that's why I was with him. And part of me, like with my mom, wanted to continue to love him and wanted to be loyal to him and wanted him to be the man that he was the first six, nine months before he switched and started showing who he really was. Okay. Uh, so the impact of, you know, falling in love, because I was madly in love with him and he was madly allegedly in love with me, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but I know how I felt. I was madly in love with him. And to give your heart to somebody who is basically stepping on it and mm -hmm. and destroying mm -hmm. it and then, oh, it's okay, I love you so much. Ah, I love you, I love you. That's how I felt. Yeah. My heart was being like, just giving mixed messages and destroyed and then, oh, I love you. No, I'm sorry I did that. And literally my body just couldn't handle it. And I got in nine months, six respiratory infections. Wow. Bronchitis. So it's almost like I couldn't breathe. Like I was, you know, it's just, and, and think about it. It's like, you're always, it just came to me. It, why the breath, I was, you know, having respiratory infections. It's almost the feeling around narcissists. It's like, like if you do something, yeah. and like, you know, yeah. you're on high alert. So it's like, it takes literally your breath away. Like you can't freaking breathe and wow. Just uh, realize you that. literally okay. So, just for the record, I want you to know this. I've been told that so much over the past, I don't know, we've been doing this 14 months or whatever 14, 16 months. So many people tell me that's what they're essentially they went through with their respiratory system. <gasps> they had this problem or that problem, or uh, gotta be on an inhaler, they gotta go see a doctor, their breathing's not right. They get skin rashes. I mean, I could go on and I should actually put, I should put it all together. I literally, I, I should put it all together. All these, I'd have to go back and watch all the almost 400 shows though. But it was, it's just, it's amazing how many people have the skin rashes, but this one, the respiratory, uh, also having eye trouble, eye strain, of course, eye twitches, uh, involuntary movements. All of a sudden they're starting to have, because as you said, How'd you do it again? I'm sorry. I'm not, not trying to make fun, but how'd you do it again? <laughs> it were just, you're just kind of living life like that, on the yeah. edge, like you're right at the cliff, like you're, you're, like you're at the Grand Canyon, and you're about to look over or being That's forced to look over. Yes. Yeah. And because you don't know when they're going to blow up. For the 
stupidest things. Like you would just like, wow. Um, and another thing, it's funny you said about the skin rashes, because I actually had such, I had hives to the level where... I've heard that before, too. I've heard that I, before, I, yeah. I yeah. had to go to the hospital. I took, like, I don't know, like 10 Benadryls, and they were like, I'm surprised you're not dead. You're not... <laughs> And you, wait, and they're going like you're here instead at the coroner's office. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> what are you doing here? You should yeah, be dead. Yeah, exactly. And it was because of him. This was like well into like the two year mark where just it was just almost unbearable. I stayed with him three years, and yes, I had to go to the hospital. Huge, like big red blotches, and then they would move from one place to the other. It was terrifying. Ugh. And and I would be like, I would be crying because I didn't know what was going on. And he was like dismissing me. Like, what? why are you crying? You know, stop being a baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. There, there's no there's no motivation for compassion no, uh, from individuals motivation. that are toxic, narcissistic, yeah. or self-absorbed. Oh. There, 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 yes. there is, there's no room to lead with compassion. You were going to say something, my friend. Go ahead. Well, they fake it. This one faked it. Yeah. Uh, Richard yeah. Dick was an actor. <laughs> oh, he was an actor. Oh, he was an actor, huh? Yeah. So he could fake it and even cry. But you know when you don't feel like that's real? Like they're, you know what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, you don't even yeah. feel, the, there's no energy behind the crying or anything. <laughs> it's almost as if, it's almost, it's almost as if it leaves their body and goes no further than their nose. And it just drops. Because <laughs> yes. it's all it's all fake, which you know it. That's just in my mind, though. I see it. They're so fake, it just comes out and it just falls right there. It yeah. never reaches another person because they're really only performing, especially if it's an, a person that's an actor, only for the camera. So they yes. know it's not. They're not trying to make it go reach the person behind the camera. They're just doing it for that moment, and it just falls. Yeah. Uh, how fake? How fake? On a scale of now, this is an easy one. On a scale of one to ten. 10 being they need their pants to be put out by the fire department. How much, how fake was he? How much of a liar was this person in your life well, on a scale of one to 10? Very sneaky. I would say a nine. Um, Cause I believe some of the things he said, he felt dumb when it came to himself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's a good actor he's i want to say something. i'm not gonna say nothing go ahead i'm not gonna say it. go ahead go ahead um and you know a person with empathy if they see you suffering they really will do everything to stop yeah. me like if i'm making you suffer i'd be like oh i'm so sorry i didn't realize i was i will stop it completely what i'm doing i will shut up and and not you know hurt yeah. you but yeah. they they just don't they don't care. I think the reason that they come back to you and they're like, I'm sorry, because that's their thing. They, mm -hmm. I love you. I hit you emotionally, physically, or whatever. I'm so sorry. I love you. I won't do it again. Yeah. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's that roller coaster of, of emotions that just keeps you on edge. And you find, did you find yourself, Grace, did you find yourself trying to throw yourself into your work or your friends or other things did you find your did you find any room inside yourself to try to process this or did you just try to keep the peace and just let me just go to work and you know it's it's mixed um i did uh write my solo show which now we're shopping as a tv show um mm. and that was that was good um i i, I do Art for me is therapeutic because that's okay. how I express myself. So uh, if anybody's going through this, um, do something that will allow you to express yourself, where it's art, visual arts, even if it's okay. like kindergarten, you know, drawing like an art therapy thing yeah. or yeah. Um, seek the help of a therapist because they will make you aware that you're being abused and they will help you mm -hmm. get out of it. Talk mm -hmm. to your friends. Your friends will see it. The problem with the friend thing is that personally, I was ashamed to even tell my mom what was going on wow. uh, to tell my friends because we were like, we had like shows together and we, in social media, like everybody thought we were like, wow, you know. This, this wonderful couple, right? Absolutely. And so 
for me, the shame was huge. And um, so, you know, I put everything into writing because writing is my therapy. Um, and I just put everything that I, I was feeling and I would show him the things that I wrote and he would act like, wow, I'm so sorry. I'm like, you realize you're my abuser. I even told them one time, you realize wow. you're my abuser. And what happened? He, and re I remember we were at a restaurant because he always tort the, he tortured me emotionally and psychologically. My mom was both and physically, but because he was a black belt, I don't think he dared hit anybody because yeah. he could go to jail. Um, right. I'm sure he wanted to hit me, um, but we were at a restaurant. I remember it was Saddle Ranch, and I told him I was crying. I was like, he did something I don't even remember because you lose track of the bullshit that yeah. they do. And so he did something or said something, and I was just crying. I'm like, you realize you're my abuser. Like, it came to me, and I was able to express it to him. Express it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that was, for me, a huge revelation to myself that I was just speaking it out, not just thinking it or trying to channel my, my suffering and my art. So when I said that, this is what he did. He stood up and like, oh. I'm so sorry. I love you so much. I wouldn't do it again. And I was like, I'm not buying it, but I really wanted to buy it because the man that I met the first nine months was perfect. Right. Wow. He needed wow. to my trust. So he was perfect. Yeah. Um, so I wanted that man back, which is kind of like a childish desire. Um, like oh. it was almost like my inner child is like, please love me and be the man you were before. And then my, adult was like let's get the hell out of here yeah yeah so i don't know if that makes sense um it, it definitely the... it definitely is going to hit home to somebody but but you're you're expressing yourself well so you you reacted by you didn't believe it what he was saying in that moment yeah saddleback saddleback ranch right yeah now but you could have responded the way you did with your mom when you socked her in the arm <laughs> but you but you didn't yeah, which um, which really shows the depth of of your understanding and growth as a person. Yeah, you knew you had to get out of there. Oh yeah, dealing oh, with him. God. Yeah, and I I prayed. I was like, the last the last thing that the last drop was. Uh, he didn't drive. Long story. So I was working, and he wanted to go to the theater to see one of his friends directing some play or whatever. And so I was like, I can't pick you up. I don't think I'm going to be on time. And he was like, well, then what am I going to do? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, take an Uber, take a ta call a, tax, a taxi or, or call a friend or something. So I show up at the theater. He couldn't go because he didn't find anybody to take him. So I show up at the theater a little late because I, I wanted to also support his friend. When I got home, he just blew up like I was the devil. Uh, when that happened, I just lost my shit, my, my caca. You, right, <laughs> right. You, so, so what happened? I lost it. So I started screaming. It was the equivalent of hitting my mom. So she would stop oh. I started screaming and telling him exactly what I thought. And he was like, he couldn't believe it. Like he wow. felt like he couldn't control me. Uh, so the mm, next mm. day I drove around mm -hmm. and I found an apartment, uh, which actually led me to the apartment I'm now in. It's been almost nine years. Wow. It's, mm. I love it. It's amazing. I was very, very lucky. And I was like, I need to get out. And I was worried about my financial situation because it was tied up to his. And, yeah. uh, and my mom and my ex-husband were like, don't worry, we got you. Oh. Wow. Yeah. My ex-husband, we were still friends at the time. And so I had that support. Like, they got me. I didn't need them to send me money, but I felt like, okay, I can do it. And if I need uh, yeah, anything, right. they're there. You have me. a safety net. You have a safety net in place if you need to. Right. Absolutely. So this, in the end, it was a matter of me um, being afraid of the financial aspect, which happens a lot with victims of narcissistic abuse, because especially if it's a partner, 
then you tie your finances together and then it's really hard to get out or to feel like you can do it. Um, right. Yes. And, and that was my fear, which fear is not a good friend. Uh, no. So, no, it's not. So uh, you, we have to kind of get through the fear, break through the fear and just say, I love myself so much that I need peace and joy in my life. And this is just causing me pain and illness, literal physical illness. Yeah, yeah. So I got to get myself out. I, I will do whatever, you know. I mean, I didn't care. Whatever, whatever job I needed. I've walked dogs. I've delivered yeah. food. I don't yeah. care. I will, you know, make it, make it work. And I did. But it's very, they got you so beat up. And um, they, you, you feel, I felt like he sucked all my energy to the mm. point where I felt I couldn't do anything. Like, I, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm, how am I going to support myself? And as soon as I moved out, mm -hmm. this burst of energy came to me. And I wow. didn't know what to do with it. I was like, what's happening to me? <laughs> Superpowers unite. Yeah. <laughs> Super like, power. I know. Go like, it felt so good. I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited. And I was sad at the same time. I would cry and then I would be like, oh my God, what am I doing with all this energy? I forgot how energetic I am. Uh, so you're, you're, you're like, you're like, you're like Supergirl going through puberty. Yes. It was like, I can throw a car. I don't feel sure about myself. I can yeah. kill, <laughs> kill, <laughs> kill I can kill a bad guy. Whatever. Totally, totally. And you see, you see that. You see that on the screen. You see that on the screen there, right? Yeah, the got... back code. Yeah, relate with you. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry that you had to go through that. And uh, I hope that you're able to turn it into a positive and know, we need to know better now. You know, yeah. um, I think once we've been through it, uh, we recognize what's toxic for us. They might not necessarily be a full-blown narcissist, but I, the last person I was dating, it's a long story, but he was toxic for me. So he was like, I want to be friends with you. I was like, no, my friends are real yeah. honest. You're fake AF. Yeah. So, I mean, I tell it yeah. like it is. I don't care. It's yeah. like, this is that's who why you, you are. That's why you're on this show. That's why you're on the show. Because you tell <laughs> it how it is. Because there it is. And that's why that's why I'm going to invest in some equipment where I'm quick enough and I can just push a button whenever you say something that'll scare the kids. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just be, listen, just, you know. You know, just just do just just go ahead and discuss what you're saying. Um, you, you're getting some more love. I don't know if you're seeing that on the screen there. I know. Uh, thank you guys. Thank uh, you. So thank you. Much. It's saying thank you so much. Appreciate you sharing your story. That's from the pack coach, uh, who's uh, also been a guest here. Um, Anastasia, uh, she's from Russia, by the way. Oh. She has Russian background there. So nice. so uh, you guys need to become friends. You know, I think yeah, she's admiring. Okay. Hey, she's admiring you, either that or stalking you, because I'm looking at. No, I'm just joking. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm teasing you, Anastasia. I'm just joking. I'm not. She's not. She's a really good person. She's, <laughs> wait, you be careful saying that on social media. <laughs> I'm really good with stalking. All the stalkers, stalkers, and the hackers all start coming your way. Where those yeah. different levels of stalking? You know, what is it like, different? I do cyber like, stalking on my exes sometimes. Like, you, one of these idiots you, out there. You know, come on, we all do it. You need a skit. You need a skit doing it. You need something that just shows there's yeah. different levels of stalking. What well, it's not like yes. it's like it's the grace way to do it, okay? And then there's the weirdo way to do it. Okay. Yes. My way is that's what you should say. My way is okay. All right. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's okay because yeah. they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to like a PI. Like, he's in there. Hey, wait, hey, wait, 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 you do it. <laughs> Hey, you do what it is. You sitting there going like, "What they doing right now?" I, I want What they? I, oh, that girl is ugly. Look at her. She I look at her. Look at her. You, you you do like you go. Her cheekbones are crooked. Yes. And I'm like, well, mm, uh, you can like, talk this. Hey, hey that's what you. That's what you, you. Wait, you talk to this. Wait, you talk to the screen, and then when you when you walk by a mirror, you go like, I don't know what that boy was thinking of when he left this. I don't know what he was. He evidently, hey, he evidently, he evidently, he evidently don't know what a good meal is. He didn't there did with a happy meal, or he gonna be disappointed because <laughs> they don't give you nothing in a happy meal. It's a lie. Totally. Like he went from lie. a 
Lamborghini to a <laughs> cloud car or something. You, know? you, got, you got a Yugo. A Yugo. <laughs> <laughs> he got himself. It's like when uh, you too young to remember. Do you remember? Do you remember by any chance the Pinto, the Pinto, Ford Pinto? It used to always yes. blow up. This way, but anyhow, so it, it's okay because it's real old. That's like me talking about the T, the Model T car for you right now. You only remember Corvettes, but that's just uh, that's that. Why are we? Why are we? Why are we talking about that? Because sometimes that crosses cars. that crosses the mind. No, that crosses the mind. That hey, oh, wait a minute. Right. How could you? Yes. How could you leave this? But in reality, they do because they never appreciated it in the first place. That's right. Absolutely. Because what you think that they want your love, that they want your support, you know, but they really want your negative emotions so they yeah. can feed off of them. It's yeah. almost they're vampires of the Yeah, they need, they need to live off of uh, an individual's imperfections and point it out so that they are really disguising how much they envy that person. And, yes. the pos and the positive qualities that make that person attractive to so many, they themselves cannot harbor and have for themselves. So they need to keep that push pull going. Uh, what were I'm um, so now I'm gonna now that I've said that, I'm gonna ask you this because you never saw that I was gonna ask you this, but I'm gonna ask you this. Um, what qualities do you feel that you have that your mother was envious of? That's a deep question. I never thought about that, and I kind of thought about it, too. She was kind of jealous in a way. Um, I think the attention that my dad gave me was uh, okay. um, probably uh, she felt that he loved me more, more than he loved her. Um, and then um, she always thought I was prettier than her, which I'm like, she was. my mom was absolutely stunning. Um, oh. I was thought, I thought she was an angel when I was little. I was like, she's so beautiful. Oh. Yeah. And, um, but I always thought my father was ugly and I looked at my father. <laughs> I was like, you are bald. You're ugly. If you, <laughs> you would laugh. My dad was <laughs> hilarious. He's so cute. Uh, my dad was adorable. I wish I would have had more time with my father because him and I have the same energy. He passed away when I was young. Uh, but oh, we wow. had the same energy, and mm -hmm. I wish that I had a chance to bond with him more because we yeah. always laughed and we had the same sense of humor. We were goofy and and silly, and maybe my mom was jealous of that too. Um, I don't I don't know. Maybe she was jealous that I was not mentally ill because I think deep down she knew she was something yeah. was wrong with her. She knew something was off. She knew something was off in the way she proceeded. To interact with other people and the way they responded yeah. because she watched other people have a different response uh, as as one uh, individual told me uh, self-proclaimed and I shouldn't not let me rephrase that a diagnosed and also self-proclaimed narcissist told me mm -hmm. they would watch TV programs and go like I've never had that I've never they would see loving moments and go like I can't even connect with it they, they literally physically connect like a hug, but internally, chemically, as he highlighted to me, I just can't connect with that. Wow. Yeah, you, yeah, you, can, you can see something. I'm gonna, I just com completed a show, and I used the analogy of a chocolate cake, so I'm going to use it again. Yeah, you can look at a dessert or whatever and go like, you know, your mouth start to water. You start thinking about what it's going to you know, be like. You can see it going in your mouth. You're like, I'm getting that. I'm going to get me some of that. And that's kind of what he was kind of describing. Like he would be sitting with other people, and they go, "Oh, isn't that?" And they would be look, he'd be looking at them. He'd look at that, and he look at it, and go, "Like, I don't get it." He literally they're told me, he's like, "I don't get it." Yes, they're never happy. So it's because, interesting. I find. I, I love the point that you bring up with that because I think now I, you made me think. Both my mom and Dick, um, they always felt like they didn't have a good life and you look at them yeah. and you're like dude you have so much yeah, to this be this for. this this yeah you start <laughs> naming off stuff you're yeah. like the what are you talking about at, at what they didn't have and, and the funny yeah. thing is my mom was a concert pianist and wow. you know dick was an actor so they were both artists and mm -hmm. they always felt like they were not where they needed to be you know like they 
why mm. is this person getting this and I'm not, you know, where yeah. I feel like if you stand on the grounds of uh, being grateful for everything, opportunities will come to you. You don't do it for the opportunities to come yeah. to you. Yeah. But, you know, I yeah. even thank the food when I eat it. I'm like, thank you. I'm like, it's just everything. I I, I buy something new. I, I thank the object. I thank the universe for it. You know, it's, it's just... Um, because I am grateful because I could have nothing, but I am yeah. so, I'm abundant. I think abundantly, but I think they don't think abundantly. So that's why they want to get your abundance and your energy so that they feel, yes, the roots of empathy, they search for more grandiosity. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what they, they do. You nailed it. Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a good point, Tim. Tim is from the roots of empathy. Sur they search for more grandiosity. Um, you've got uh, love that was shown to you here in the group chat. One of the things that I do want to ask you, uh, you know, I'm not going to kidnap you all day. And uh, hello to, uh, I believe that says uh, Love's Glam that just joined us and, and uh, Cindy and others that are here. I'm going to ask you this. When it comes to, we just talked about the fact that there are certain things about you that your mom could have been envious of. or, mm -hmm. But I'm going to ask you about a statement you made that we could give thought to, especially if this is happening to you, you're in the group chat or you watch this back later uh, or are listening to this. Uh, as many of you do, many of you don't watch the show. You just download it and put it on your, uh, find an app that you can get out of a play store. You can download the shows and you can listen to it as you work out uh, in a podcast format. So you mentioned that she could have been jealous of you. She knew something was off because she knew you weren't mentally ill. Mm -hmm. And when you said that, it made me think about some of the others that have mentioned to me how much the narc tries to get them to come across, smear them, or whatever it may be. They want them to go to the doctor. They want them <laughs> to, they want a record that they're crazy because they know they're not going to stay. They know they're leaving. Or they may be forced to stay but they at least want to have, quote, unquote, the mental upper hand because they can say, well, I never had to go for treatment. But the reality of it is we all know they would never submit to treatment unless they were straightjacketed to do so. There's a reason why they made straightjackets. There's a reason why they made straightjackets. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a reason why they make them hug themselves because now we understand narcissism to a measured degree, even if we're just ghetto uh, psychologists and therapists. Uh, we understand what we're looking at. Now we know why they put your arms around you. You need a hug, boy. Something wrong with you. <laughs> you need, you need. But yes. that jealous, that aspect of being jealous or envious that, hey, my daughter is the sky's the, 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 the sky's the limit. There's no ceiling for her. Right. That could have been eating at her. Possibly. I think so. I, I think, I think it's the, my mental sanity and also my temperament because that's I a really good age. point. I'm sorry. I got to process that as a guy, your yeah. mental sanity and yeah. uh, as it were, your personality, your, your demeanor, your continence, who you, that could create, I could see that being a problem for somebody that's self-absorbed and narcissistic and they just got to get you off center. Of course. Absolutely. You know, it's funny because when all oh, this is making me think, uh, when my mom went to therapy one time to talk about my brother and myself, because we are this the is, screw ups, right? This and, is kind of like a show prep. This has not turned into a show at all. We're just literally talking the way we would be talking if we weren't even had a camera. But go ahead. You were saying. Totally. But we're totally paying attention to, to the audience. I wish we could yes. talk to the audience. I would love yes. to hear their stories. Be in a um, room. It'd be great. Go ahead. You were saying, please. Um, your brother, so, you yeah, and your brother. Okay. That was, I'm trying to think what I was going to say. Okay. Hey, I told you, I got you, girl. You come on this show. I got you. I got you when we're talking straight yes. or when we're talking right now. Go ahead. Go ahead. I got you. Uh, so it's funny because my mom went to a therapist, you know, to mm -hmm. complain about my brother and, <laughs> and my father, of course. We were all screw ups except for her. Um, so. <laughs> that is just so common. And then it just makes it me is, laugh. It's, it's stupid. It's stupid. And then so. Well, so, you said it. I wasn't going to say that about your mom, but yeah, that's just, it's stupid. yeah. But they, they look for bad therapists that will validate their shit. Bingo. Absolutely. Yes. I, yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. And then when Dick went to therapy, 
they talked about me all the time. And he was like, you know, <laughs> well, you were abused by your mom. So I think the relationship is not working because you have so many issues and you have, wow. it was like, do, do you guys talk about me? Why? I have my own therapist. Why are you talking about They became me? buds. They, they became buds to team up against you. Or of course we know all the clinical terms of throat triangulation on it. But right now we're just talking. Yeah. Well, I'm, okay. So what was that like? I'm sorry. I gotta, I gotta ask this now. You're sitting well, there and you're supposed to be this neutral party giving clinical information to further unity was now becoming part of the hatchet to cut you out and separate you out as being the problem. Of course. You're always the problem. You oh, piss wow. them off. You're making them out. It's almost like the devil made me do it and you're the devil. Yeah, right. Like Flip Wilson all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's there is... Go ahead, right. please. Well, uh, Dick used to, one time I remember he threw, he got jealous about everything. He was jealous of gay guys, my gay friends who would come around you. Me. I mean, you could tell they were gay. It's not like, you know, he was wondering. He knew they were gay. He knew they like men. And still, one time I remember a, a good friend of mine who's also a comedian, he said, he's looking at me like he wants to kill me. Does he know I'm gay? I'm like, yes, he does. But he was jealous of gay men. So I remember one time he was jealous about whatever, uh, and it was my fault because I seduced the person that looked at me. <laughs> of course, it's always. I told fault. you, I told you not to wear that T-shirt. <laughs> it makes yeah, every exactly. man look at you. But that potato sack. Why do you wear that potato sack? It makes every man look at. You. So done with them, uh, and, and he threw like his food across the. What? The, yes, and I was so like. I felt it was my fault that I was making him jealous. This was earlier in the relationship. And so I cleaned everything up like I was his little bitch or something. You literally. Yeah. I'm not, we're going to talk about this when we don't have a camera on. So that way I can, I can, I can beat you up for this on purpose. And, and <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to abuse you. That would, no, no. I know. you cleaned it up, huh? Yeah. And you, you apologize. You're, you're, I don't think so because um, I didn't feel I was torn. I felt like I didn't do anything wrong, but he made me feel I'm. He made me feel like I made him jealous. Like it was my fault that what, he was jealous. What is that like? I, I really need to ask. What are I'm just give an idea for myself and others that may not understand. What are the emotions inside of you when someone's telling you you're making that person get aroused and want? And I'm getting jealous by you doing this on purpose. Uh, it's not like you're saying, hey, honey, you know what? We're sitting in the front row here, and you want to be careful about maybe crossing your leg because you're going to flash the guy. You know, oh, yeah, I got to be mindful of that. Oh, hand me my jacket or put it, put the shawl over my leg. Okay, you know, maybe I'm just saying. This is different. This is kind of like mm -hmm. you woke up this morning <laughs> knowing we were coming here, and you deliberately put lipstick on. <laughs> so, like you, you deliberately decided to put makeup on to get that guy to want to go to bed with you. And it's like, who are? What is your problem? <laughs> what do you? I'm supposed to just walk around and look like I just got off an of Amish farm? Oh, it was it was insane. One time I remember where the party of my late friend Ann Beats. She was um, one of the original uh, writers on SNL, and I adored her. And she mm -hmm. always had a great Christmas party. And so, I, of course, I went with Dick. And uh, and there was this actor who had been in like some you know TV show that was known some cop yeah. TV show, mm -hmm. and his woman was there and he was looking at me and flirting with me. I was holding on to Dick like saying, "This is my man. Stop flirting." I'm not. Yeah, stop flirting. Yeah, I'm not doing anything. Let me tell you, when we came out, when we were in the car, you were flirting with him, and I was like. It's the opposite. I was trying to show him I'm with you, so stop looking at my breasts. Right, 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 and right. Stop flirting with me, and he wouldn't have it. It was my fault that the guy it was, was looking fault. at me and flirting with It was my fault. You spent most of your childhood probably living that way where everyone, your mom was telling you it was your fault. Absolutely, and you know how I react, and I don't do it anymore, but when I lived with Dick, uh, he would say something, I didn't do it. Like that, like a child, like I didn't knee jerk reaction, like, mm -hmm. like, 
right? You just yeah. automatically just trying to defend yourself and claim, in other words, claim your innocence that I didn't do anything. That can be a pattern for some people living right now. Yeah. With whether it be secularly or whether for some of them, they can live their life in the wrong place spiritually with people that make them feel that way, that are taking advantage of them or abusing them. Uh, I have one person mention that to me, the, the abuse they went through when they went to a particular uh, church uh, for years, uh, being sexually abused, and they find themselves in a knee-jerk reaction similar to what you said. Somebody will say something or do, and they just immediately go like, what? and they're like, what? Is, you know, people around them go like, are you all right? It's kind of like, right. did you find yourself still doing that after the fact? Claiming your innocence when you felt a little pushed? Um, or well, were you done I, with it when you were done with him? Yeah, I, I still felt, I always felt um, upset when I was, I, I'd be wrongly accused of something. Very upset. because Crushed? Kind of crushed? Really yeah, hurt you? Yeah. And I think now I got over it because, you know, I've done a lot of work on myself and certain circumstances have been life-changing. And I've yeah. done a lot of thinking and a lot of researching. And I know that... When other people react, it's about them and not about me. So mm -hmm. when I look at it that way, yeah. I, don't get me wrong. I will be like, okay, did I do anything? Did I contribute person? to it? Yeah. yeah. I will totally check myself. But when I realize that it wasn't about me, then I'm like, yeah. it's cool. So I have that pattern now in my head where I don't get as upset um, as I used to. Probably not upset anymore. If it, it lasts maybe five seconds and then I'm like, Yeah, oh, a, little, okay. a little bit, a little bit. And you go yeah. like, well, wait a minute. How much, is this being, how much is this being generated over there coming at me and not uh, something I literally generated and, and caused a problem? But when you were growing yeah. up, you were the problem. Did you, well, excuse me, let me rephrase that. Did you yeah. see yourself as the problem? I'm just curious. Oh, yeah. When you I were with be. your abusive mom. Absolutely. I would pray to God to make me perfect so my mom wouldn't wow. get upset. Mm -hmm. Really? That was my never, prayer. I wanted never to knew perfect. that about you. Wow. Okay, how did that work for you as you end up not living with your parents anymore? Did you continue thinking that thought of yeah. not being perfect? Um, I know I am not perfect. Obviously, I know it. Yes. Uh, we all are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Intellectually, emotion, right? Yeah, emotionally, yes. I always wanted to be perfect, um, but the frustration is that you can't be perfect. So mm -hmm. you got to come to terms with that. Um, I don't need to be perfect. Uh, I just need to be kind and have empathy mm -hmm. and um, block the narcs or block <laughs> the people who are toxic. You know what I do? Yeah. I Wait. not only block them everywhere. But I delete their number too, so I'm not tempted to text them. Uh, anything. So they can't communicate with me. I can't communicate with them. I recommend to anybody who's going through this, that's the best thing you can do for yourself. Block them everywhere, so you are not tempted. Be like, um, this lady told me she's a lawyer. She's a lawyer that that came on the show, and she said in her situation. She just, you know what? She took $1,000. She says, I want these people out of my life no matter what it takes. Uh, well, no, hear what I'm saying. Electronically. She says, if that means a new phone, if that means a new phone number, she said, <laughs> she said, she said, went through her phone and picked out as many people as she could that she thought she could still keep in her life. The rest, she was done because they all knew him. <laughs> and so Excellent. even if they did, even if they didn't like him, she says he could still get to me through them. I can live without them. Everybody's different. That's, that's what worked for her. Roots of Empathy says they hate any connection you've got with other people because, yeah, you, share, yes. because you share emotions with, this, with, with those people, in other words, and not with them. It scares them. I'm sorry. I have to repeat that again. It's such a great statement. Tim, that's, dropping bombs, Tim, that's pretty good. They hate any connection you've got with other people because you share emotions with those people and not with them. It scares them. Yeah, they can't control you as well if somebody is emotionally involved, you know, if you're connecting emotionally with someone. That's why they try, like a cult, they try to isolate you from your friends. Yes. He yes. never liked my friends. Mm -mm. This one is doing this, this one is doing that. I don't like this one. I don't like your mom. 
I don't like this. You know, anybody that can help you and connect with you and open your eyes. Actually, that's really good that you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. They hate them if they can help you. You said if they open your eyes. Mm -hmm. And so if you're if you're going through this or you watch this back or you know someone going through it, drop these little nuggets of information to them uh, that Grace uh, is discussing. Tim highlighted to us here uh, that they don't like it if you got friends that open your eyes, not just to them, but just period, help you grow. And they definitely don't like people. Uh, who you have a connection with that that explains a lot those are a lot of red flags that person can pick up on real quick if they're not sure or if you're in a relationship and you see that they don't want you to progress and grow that's a problem yes they should be supportive and not get in the way absolutely and i love what he's saying triangulation afterwards um it reminds yes. me i had a friend <laughs> I'm Grace, and she was Faith. <laughs> so, <laughs> how do you get a friend like that? I know it's crazy. But you need love. You need love, and then peace, and then harmony. Grace okay, guys. <laughs> there you go. Yes. So Dick liked her, right? But then <laughs> he realized that you know her and I have this connection where we start talking, and yeah. you cannot mm -hmm. get in our bubble. Like we talk, yes, and we right. completely ignore you. Your friend. Like, your yeah. friends, that's normal. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, we completely, yeah. You, you can try to talk with look and be like, shut up. <laughs> yeah, here's <laughs> a, sister from a, a sister from another mister, right? That's, exactly. your, that's your buddy. Yeah. That's your riding buddy. Okay, go ahead. Totally. Listen to what he did. We were at a SAC party, and SAC after, and I took Faith with me because, you know, this was like the third, entering the third year of our three-year relationship. And I got to stick, stick this in real quick because somebody just asked me. It's the Screen Actors Guild. It's all, I don't, let's clarify that. It's not a bad SAG, but a SAG party is what she said. S-A-G. Well, go ahead. Oh, yeah. saying, <laughs> I just had to clarify that. Uh, yeah. our, us, us, in our, us in our high California terms, yeah, right yeah, on the East Coast. Yeah, Who's the SAG? <laughs> I, know what it's SAG. I know what sagging is, but I don't know what SAG. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. You were saying. And so since he realized he was trying to get in the conversation and he couldn't because we would not even look at him at this point we'll be like oh he's there we don't care we're talking so this i would love to have seen that no, i funny. would he love to not... have been sitting there watching that <laughs> yeah he could not enter the bubble so it was impossible and so <laughs> he this is what he did and it really made me mad he started like bringing cake to her and stuff like catering to her like she was his girlfriend, and I'm like, I'm chopped liver. I'm sitting here. What am I, chopped liver? Yeah, like I, I think she wanted a threesome, maybe or something. I don't know. Seriously, it, it is. I was like, he, he's flirting with her it's in front of you me. while I'm talking to her. Well, yes. <sighs> How disgusting is that? It, you know what? You can see why people can get tired living with people that act that way. Because it's tiring to go like, are you seriously doing this right now? Mm -hmm. No, no, really, just take a moment. Let me take a snapshot so I can show you. Oh, wait, that wouldn't do any good because you don't care. <laughs> so it's, kind of, <laughs> why, it's like, <laughs> why even show you a picture? Me. I can show you a video of what you're doing or an audio of what you said, but it means literally nothing because they would have to care. But that behavior that he showed you then was pretty much groundwork for, I'm quite sure he got worse after that. I, you know, it was like so many red flags. It was like I had, all I had in my apartment was red <laughs> flags, you know. I couldn't see me on red. It was a red party. It was just like uh, so ridiculous. And, you and you should have just became a, a you should have just became a, you became a fireman. That's what you should have did. You just became a yeah. fire, firewoman. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. So she what? What did you just say? She what? She was oblivious to what was going on. She was like, oh, how sweet, you know, because he was much older than me. So it was like uh, our dad ate. <laughs> nice, so, nice old man. Like, he, he was nice old man. Like my mom, if you can believe. It. Was, <laughs> he was uh, like my mom. Oh, okay. Um, so I know what it was. Let's just come on now. Let's be frank and honest with each other. You, you were with him, so you could have some good comedy material for future skits. You're just, you're just, you, you're just you caught me. You, you just yes. curses you tiny toilet. You caught me. So you, you just totally no. caught me. 
This was an abusive situation in which you learned things you had no idea you were going to be learning. And it unlocked aspects of your life with your mom that you never recognized you were going to be analyzing. And technically, at this point, it helped you, though, become a, a relationship coach, a certified relationship coach. Yes. IPA. Am I saying that right? IEP, yes. Okay. Okay. Which means? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, 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 time out, wait, time out, time out. I was going to give it, I was going to give it a name. Look, I was going to give it a name. That's why I was setting this up to say that that way. Uh, I can't say it. I would messed it up now. Like, it's not the same if I said it now. It would have been funny if I was, yeah, I was going to give it a ghetto name. I was going to give it a ghetto name, but I'm not going to do it now. I'm not going to. Yeah, yeah, no, we're not going to go there. It has to do about, you know, never dealing with a narc again, but that's all right. Another whole story. Do you see what's on the screen? Jeez. No, what my eyes Tim is Tim has lost his mind. Where? Ricardo, do you see Ricardo? <laughs> Ricardo Dick, what is you. wrong with you people? What is wrong with Thanks you the people? Cake man, yes. <laughs> the cake man. All right, all right. Yeah. This is gonna mean nothing to anybody that watches this back later because Ricardo wrote something. Ricardo, you knew what you need to do. You need to when this show is uploaded, you need to type that in the comments which will only mean something to the three of us and anybody that watched this. Uh, yeah. So he played the cake man. He, you know what? They will put on any role they need to to get uh, take attention uh, from the person that needs to get attention and put it on themselves. What do you say? Grandiosity, right? Grandiosity, yes. Yes. When it, when it came to you making the decision to not be abused anymore, mm -hmm. you mentioned a little bit earlier it was, it was challenging, it was difficult because you you didn't have a safety net immediately, but you you needed to you needed to not take the abuse anymore, and you okay. literally had you literally had abuse. I had somebody mention this to me, and and I had to clarify it to them. When I say that, I mean literally. I'm talking to people that had abuse, and uh, they were highlighting to me that there are people that get accused falsely of being abusive, and it's not true. That's not what this show is is approaching. This actually. Uh, is abuse what we're talking about, emotional and mental abuse. And yes, there are guests that come on and have talked about their physical abuse as well. Uh, many of them, some of them uh, have been on and they're in hiding, uh, literally, uh, wow. because their abuser is still chasing them. And they're in a whole other country. They have moved to a whole other country. Yeah, I, I've had three of them. I have, I've had three of them right now on top of my head. And they're still in, in as it were, <laughs> hiding, uh, wow. as it were. They're only able to do so much when we did the show. Uh, because they don't want that person who's still looking for them. Uh, not like a lawyer looking on a cease and desist. They want to cease and desist them, uh, has happened uh, for the show. So your abuse is one that is real to you. Somebody's going through the same thing, but they're still dealing with it, or they're still waking up with that person. Yeah. Words of advice Words of advice to them. Ooh, that's a tough one. Um... Uh, uh, just, just know that you have the power to be by yourself and you're going to be better off and you can get out of that situation. There's always a way out. Death is the ultimate thing that you can't get out of. Anything else in life you can get out of. Even if you feel like, oh my God, I'm trapped in this. I mm. can't afford to leave. I I still love him. I want him to change. Maybe he'll change. Because those are thoughts that, that come to you, you know, or I'm ashamed that people are going to see that this didn't work and I loved him so mm -hmm. much and, and, you know, we claim to love each other so much. And, and it's just so many thoughts. But the ultimate thing is you are going to be so much better off without that person in your life. And it's not going to be easy to get out of the relationship. Mm -hmm. But once you're out, and you have that peace and that joy that you had before and your energy back because they suck your energy. Once mm -hmm. you have all of that, you're going to be like, oh, my God, how did I put up with all that crap? Wow. How did I survive all that? So think about the rewards. I always, whenever I'm going through a difficult situation, mm -hmm. I focus on what they call your future self. You know, time is a human construct, but there is a future self living right now because time is not real. Um, that's what I think, right? So there's a future self. So I'm almost like 
talking to my future self, not really talking, but mm. visualizing and, and saying, okay, the reward is going to be, and I see myself, I saw myself mm. in this apartment, uh, I'm in the location I wanted, the price range, everything. I visualized mm -hmm. all that. I desperately wanted it. And it all came to pass in literally five days. I was out of there. So five days before, I was like, I'm, it's impossible for me to get out. And then five days later, I got out and I was like, I wow. did. So you can do it. You have to love yourself first. And if you love yourself, you're not going to take that kind of treatment. Yeah, right. I don't yeah. take shit from anyone anymore. If somebody, like the last guy I broke up with, well, he kind of, it's a long story, but he was fake. He faked the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me laugh because it's so stupid. How much effort does it take to fake it? Um, <laughs> that's so sad. That's a, lot of, that's a lot of energy to be a liar. Absolutely. It's so much easier to be truthful. Well, he was more of a coward. He's got a lot uh, of work to do. Uh, he didn't realize, I mean, he doesn't realize how like far behind he's from most of us, um, which have done work. If you don't work on yourself, you're all, you know, you're still repeating the patterns that you mm -hmm. had at home. So that's what he was doing. And he was also a victim of narcissistic abuse. However, what he was doing to me was passive aggressive abuse. So I do I want somebody like that in my life, even as a friend? Hell no. Why? Yeah, not, not even as a because, friend. Right. No, because I love myself. My friends love me, and I love myself. My friends treat yeah. me well. They're honest and real with me. They don't lead me on. They don't freaking lie to me. They they're brutal. So I'm yeah, most of my friends are brutal. <laughs> they, they all have that in common. And I might be like, okay, tone it down a little bit. Mm, <laughs> I know? I think I think. Are you the common denominator? Are you the Kevin Bacon for them then? Are you the common denominator of brutal, uh, of, of brutal honesty? Do you get, yes. so they, they're trying that. to live up, they're trying to live up to the standard that you set to hold on to you. They, you know what? They're naturally like that. And it's like, I, they, they speak my language. I have. You found a, your really, bubble. You found your bubble. <laughs> you found your bubble. Absolutely. It's like, it's, uh, if you're real, it's all about in life. It's so easy to be real with kindness. You can be kind yes. and be real yes. and just yes. be honest and, and, and not waste people's times and energy and, and, yes. and freaking uh, emotions. Be beat around the bush and playing games and hitting agendas and, and no. sight, words out of the side of your mouth when you're really hurt, trying to hurt them the other way and you're showing right. that you're better than them and all these things. Uh, these are, these are toxic behaviors. Mm -hmm. these, are, these are behaviors that are just bad. Because it doesn't promote good because you're attacking someone else's dignity and self-respect and self-esteem. Uh, you, you are a talented person. Thank you. I would know because I've talked to you and you're just naturally funny and you're naturally caring and you're extremely kind. Thank you. I've even had the privilege and the honor to listen to your comedy many times over that you have no idea that I've done that, but even before we ever met. And so the, when you came on last year, it was a true honor to have you because I knew who you were before you knew who I was. And some of the best people you can meet sometimes in life uh, are people uh, that you hear or see them or whatever the case may be. And then you meet them because you recognize where their talent comes from. Your talent, this is just me saying this to you, doesn't come from what happened to you in childhood. I see your talent coming coming out and coming from you because of the way you see the world and how you feel about people. The way you feel about people, that's just the way I see it. Yes, you're correct. So the way you feel about people is exactly the way you should be treated. Yes. And now you have set down the gauntlet you pulled up the drawbridge for all the troublemakers and said, no more, baby. <laughs> you got to come this way because this is the way I treat people. Yes. And that is, that, is a, that is a beautiful example that you set. You're exemplary without even knowing that you're being exemplary because there are so many people that have no one to look to that can show them you don't tolerate that kind of behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, They never had anybody in their corner to go like, no, 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 no. You don't let him talk to you like that, girl. <laughs> no, 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 yeah. you don't. And so now you 
are out there as someone that people can look to when they, they listen to this back is that you really mean what you say. You're not tolerating this from people. Nope. And there's, and there's nothing wrong with being that way, correct? Absolutely not. Because if you close the door on somebody toxic, which is bad for you, why would you want to, you know? Open the door. Yeah, Open the door like again. Cancer for the soul, you know? <laughs> yeah. Literally cancer for the soul. Yeah. Um, I can actually have time, instead of wasting time with, like, that guy, we want to be friends. Yes, yeah. we could be friends, yeah. technically, you know, and, and talk yeah. about stuff. But why would I want to waste my time talking to somebody who I don't know if they're being real? They're full of shit. And I can t be talking to you right now instead of talking to that person yeah. who I, it has nothing positive for me or 50 50 you know i want 100 yeah. percent positive because i want to be 100 percent positive to yeah. you i want to be a and blessing it, to you and it's very important for or especially young ladies uh, many of them now watching the the shows here on narc abuse tv network that is very important for you i really want anyone that hears this to benefit from it but especially young women yes uh, as a father of daughters is that it's it's okay to think and be that way for yourself, to set up those boundaries that way and not yeah. feel guilty or shamed into putting them down and letting a floodgate of stupidity into your life. You don't have to accept that on social yeah. media from anybody that quote unquote has been your friend for eons only to find out they really are not there for you. They are consumers and not mm -hmm. contributors, uh, contributors to your life. Uh, yeah. Thank you for taking the time today. I, I, you're so I, welcome. Thank you for having me. I have me gone here. an hour and hour and twenty and... minutes. I can't believe we went that long. Go ahead. You're gonna say something. Any yeah, words I... of advice before we have to go? Anything. Um, Don't have to make it short. I'm just I'm just letting you know that. You take as long as you need. Anything else you want to say? I think from all that we talked about, the main thing is to love yourself first. And that is not selfish, unlike society wants you to think that if a woman doesn't love herself, you know, loves herself first, then she is selfish and a bad mm, woman. Right, correct. No, right. it's the opposite. Because if you love yeah. yourself, you're going to treat yourself right and you're going to treat your, uh, other people right. So yeah. for all the young women out there, love yourself. That's my main thing. I wish I would have known this when I was younger. Oh. And it, it probably would have helped me a lot. Uh, but that's, that's it. Love yourself, love your body, love your soul. And anything that's toxic, you know, think about your, do you want to drink bleach? Uh, uh, that's what you're doing when you're around toxic people. Yeah. You're doing that to your soul. And eventually, those things do manifest in the physical realm in your body. Yeah. You, 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 you'll definitely start feeling it in many, many ways. But you'll definitely start seeing it, too, because so many people say they end up being sick in a number of things. Tim... Yeah. From the roots of empathy says take time to reflect and focus what you really want I love be that. honest be honest to yourself and put the pink glasses <laughs> aside when re when reflecting yes. I, don't, I don't have any pink glasses but i'm going with that yeah put the pink glasses mm -hmm. put your rose colored glasses aside because the reality is uh whatever whatever we're really looking at whatever is in front of us it's real so if if you know you're feeling that he's lying, he's probably lying. <laughs> it's Trust just, your instincts. It's, you, it's reality is whatever you're really looking at. So if you're really looking at somebody being mean to somebody, you can't give them a pass just because they're they didn't have a Snickers that day. They they're that may be their pattern, and uh, you may need to rethink uh, who you're dealing with, ladies. Uh, I want you to know. I wanted to have a show with Grace so that we can kind of talk to the ladies, especially the young women. Many of you who watch the show and have, have mentioned stuff in the comments and have, have talked to me. Uh, having a show in which is a pep talk, per se, for ladies to keep in mind that it's okay to stand up for yourself. That it's okay. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to be shamed and guilted into something different. Thank you yes. for allowing uh, this time we had together. Um, how you doing, my friend? All good, in the, all good in your world. All good in your world. All good. Yes, yes, all good. Okay. All good. All right. all good. All right. One more thing to the young women or older women or whatever women in general: remember that you're a queen, 
So if somebody doesn't treat you like the queen that you are, mm -hmm. bye bye. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. 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 You 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 done started some. You and Tim done started some. I, I'm trying not to. He makes me laugh looking at the screen. The roots of empathy. I don't know which you. Did you? What is wrong with you people? I'm trying to end it on a serious note. He was just like, yes, "All right, be the queen that you are, and don't settle for less, ladies." Thank you for being here, all of you that have come through and stayed. Uh, Tim, thank you for staying, and uh, Pat, Coach, others, Teacher of Hope. I see you there, my friend. Uh, Kelly, Flo, uh, Juan, uh, Sassy, and Soulful as well. Others that have been here. Tim said, and leaves serving toxic cakes to ricardo hilarious that's a great that is end. thank you yes that, I mean, yeah you know a lot of people are gonna that came in are gonna go like who's ricardo what cakes are they talking about you gotta watch the whole show you gotta watch the show and you have to like comment share follow and support uh um uh, grace uh with her efforts grace people can watch um Anything that you've done by what Googling you? Do they go to Spotify? Yeah. I, see, uh, by the way, just if you ever want to hear some of Grace's stuff, I know you can find it on Spotify. That I know. Uh, uh, you can type in uh, your name and they'll pull up some of your comedy acts. But how could they find you if they wanted to listen to your stuff uh, or even shows and different things that you've done? Uh, you did stuff with Steve Harvey and other people. You've done Hulu stuff. You've done other things, projects that you've done. How yeah. can they find it? Well, uh, I would love for them to um, listen to the podcast that I have. I have I'm in a hiatus right now, but I have tons of episodes um, on uh, Apple uh, Podcasts, Spotify. Let me see. <laughs> I was going to say, I was waiting for that. I knew I should have gave you a heads up. My bad. My bad. I should have gave you a heads up. Go ahead. Spotify. I mean, all these places. <laughs> And it's called Love at First Laugh, and laugh is spelled L-A-F-F. -F. And I interview people in the business, mainly people that are geared towards comedy. I've had some incredible people, like Lydia Cornell from Too Close to, for Comfort, mm -hmm. Rhonda Shear from Up All Night. Rhonda Shear, mm -hmm. Yeah, she's a good friend of mine. I almost mm -hmm. uh, married her ex-brother-in-law, long story. <laughs> How did I not get that as the show? That's sort of, okay, go ahead, go ahead. I love Rhonda, she's beautiful. Yeah, and she's yeah. Beautiful person, and um, I mean, I've had Steve Scroven, who was um, was a writer on Everybody Loves Raymond. I've had mm -hmm. amazing people. So if you want to listen to them, uh, they're funny, they're informative. Yeah. Um, it's, it's love at first laugh, and you just put my name. Also, you can just Google it by I mean on Spotify and all the podcasts. Yeah. So yeah, that one, and then you can watch my stand up comedy if you go. I have one reel up because I don't like to have too much stuff. So I have one up, and you can watch it. I just put Grace Friday stand up comedy on YouTube and follow me on Instagram. I, I do mm -hmm. mostly my comedy and lingerie on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll see some pictures of lingerie, and it's not about sexy stuff, it's about body positivity. If I can be in lingerie, anybody can be in lingerie. <laughs> No, I can't be. No, I can't be in lingerie. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you. You know what? You need to. You need to stop. Don't even be. Don't, don't be lying to these people. I can't. I have virgin eyes, virgin ears, and I gotta. No, I should not be. No, I shouldn't. Listen, I know one thing is. I know one thing is for sure about this. You always come on and make somebody think. And today it was Tim from the Roots of Empathy. He will not. He will never forget toxic cakes. <laughs> and well, and wait, and Ricardo, because we just gave somebody a name. Ricardo, we just got a Ricard, Ricardo. Ricardo. That is actually my my brother's name. Oh really? I have I have a brother that's named that. Yes, yes. Well, you know, we didn't do this. I was gonna say, let's do this real quick. What uh, what cultural background do you have? I am originally from Argentina. I was born and raised there, and I came here. I went to college and stayed. Yeah, and yeah. so I have a linguistically latin background uh from spain mexico and so forth and so um everyone has uh spanish names except me but it was gonna say, except me so, except me so that's pretty much i don't want to i don't want to deal with this trauma right now so anyhow, so, uh, so so i am i am i'm half oh, i still roll my r's that you know all my my all my children speak spanish 
they had no choice. My mother spoke Spanish, so we. I I grew up in a house that spoke Spanish, so so I I was uh I was Spanglish before it was popular. That is awesome. <laughs> You're like English in school, and then I have to transfer my brain back to normal <laughs> when I got home because you know everything was in Spanish, and then yeah, I just yeah. yeah yeah you exactly. know what I'm talking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and people looking at you going like, well, "Can you answer me?" And I go like, "Hold on a second, <laughs> yeah, I can, let me, but let me, go to the let, me yeah, let me, because <laughs> I can't answer you, but I'll talk so fast, you'll be looking at me going like, "What did you just say?" <laughs> I know what I said, but you don't know what I said. But anyhow, all right, I gotta go. Uh, I, I love you, my friend. I love you, my friend. I seriously do the best uh, always for you, and I will talk to you soon. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Definitely. Show some love to Grace, my guest. Uh, I will see you soon. Okay. Definitely. Thank you for Thank making you guys us for tuning in. Making us laugh. We'll see you later. All right. All bye. Right. Bye.